Hello there, seventh graders. This is Mr. Kashi speaking. As you can see, I can't be there in class with you today, but uh, I would like to go through the lesson here. And actually, we have a kind of a unique situation. We have to go. We have to finish up the lesson we had yesterday. Get into the next lesson so we don't get behind, and um, hopefully finish up a couple assignments here by the time that I get back. Okay. So our schedule for the day is on the board. I'd like to go over the last part that we didn't cover yesterday, which is on greatest common factor. And then um, that will show you how to finish up your assignment. It should be the um, last four problems that we uh, that you couldn't get to because we didn't go over greatest common factor. Hopefully some of you got to it anyways. Uh, and then we will go move on to 2-3, which is on simplifying fractions. I'll have a short lesson on that. And then you will be able to start your assignment, which is uh, it's a worksheet today on um, simplifying fractions. So moving on, that's our schedule. What you need out right now is your vocab sheet. Your vocab sheet. Um, I'll give you a minute to get that out in case you didn't have that. I handed it out yesterday. There should be some extras on the front table um, if there, uh, if you weren't here yesterday to get one of those. So chapter number two, vocab sheet. And we're going to be on section two, three. All right. So, greatest common factor is our first thing. Okay? So, greatest common factor we have 24 and we have 36. Now, to find the greatest common factor between these two, we have to create a factor tree and get the find the prime factorization between these two. Now, from yesterday, if you can remember, there are multiple different ways of doing this, but since I'm not there today, it would be easiest if we both did it the same way. So I'm going to split up 24 into 12 and 2. I'm going to circle 2 right away because it is a prime number. Now I'm going to split 12 up into 6 and 2. I'm going to circle 2 right away once again because it is a prime number. And then here we're going to have 3 and 2. And circle both of them because they are prime numbers. Then I'm going to move over to here to 36. I'm going to split 36 up. 36 I'm going to split up into <clears throat> um, 18 and 2. I'm going to split 18 up into 9 and 2. Once again, I'm circling these 2's because they're both prime numbers. And then 9 we split into two different 3's right here. All right. <clears throat> so those are the prime factorizations of 24 and 36. Now to find the greatest common factor, <clears throat> we have to match up which factors they have in common, which prime factors they have in common. Okay, so since there's a 2 here and a 2 there, we know that they have that one in common. And a 2 there and a 2 there. So we're going to put a times 2 up there as well. Now, 24 has one more 2, but 36 does not. Okay, so we can't have we can't have this 2 and we can't have uh, one of those threes, but we can have another one. There is one three to give over on the 24, and there's another three here. And so that means we do a three up there. Now, to find the greatest common factor, we have to multiply that out. Okay, so two times two is four. Four times three is 12. 12 is our greatest common factor there. <coughs> so, to review what we did, to find the greatest common factor, you have to find um, the prime factorization for both numbers. You have to match up the ones that are in common. In this case, there are two twos and a three. And then you multiply those common prime factors out. And in this case, we get 12. Okay. 
The reason we're doing this greatest common factor is you need to know that in order to simplify a fraction, which is what we're going to be talking about next in uh, section 2.3. Now this is uh, the last part of yesterday's um, lecture that you needed to finish up those last four problems on, um, <clears throat> on your assignment. So your assignment here, I believe it was like uh, closer to the end, closer to 40 here, that you um, needed to find the greatest common factors of a couple of numbers. Okay, now with your <clears throat> with your vocab sheet, we have a couple of uh, terms to put down. Equivalent fractions. Okay, Equivalent fractions would be the first one, and that is fractions that name the same amount. Okay, So jot that down. It is not written in for you, so you're going to have to write in equivalent fractions, and they are fractions that name the same amount. I'll give you some time to write that in. All right. Now the next one is going to be simplest form. Simplest form, when a fraction's numerator and denominator have no factors in common. Okay, that is when a fraction is in its simplest form. I'll give you a minute to write that down as well. I have to move on due to time. If you need more um, time to jot this down, please raise your hand and the sub will pause the video so you can do so. Those are the two, those are the two vocab words that we needed to get out of the way so we can go on to things like this. All right? If we have a fraction one half, one over two, the top one, one is going to be our numerator. You should already know that from last year. And the uh, bottom will be our denominator. Okay. Now, we have um, one half on the far left, and then we have 30 sixtieths on the far right. We want to find two equivalent fractions that go in between these two. All right? and there's a couple of ways we can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by um, by three. Okay, I'm going to multiply them both by three. One times three would be three. Two times three would be six. All right, three sixths is equivalent to one half, and it's also equivalent to thirty sixtieths, and it should look rather similar to thirty sixtieths because um, all that's missing is the is the zeros. And then from there on, we could multiply any by any number as long as we don't go over 30 sixtieths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by uh, 4. Multiply by 4. Top and bottom both have to be multiplied by the same number. So 3 times 4 gives me 12, and 6 times 4 gives me 24. 20, 12 24 ths is also equivalent to one half. Okay? All of these fractions are equivalent to one another. They all mean the same thing. They're all uh, equivalent to one half. All right. And now we have one, <coughs> one fraction, nine twenty-firsts. Okay, now this is not in simplest form because neither of these are prime numbers. So what we have to do is we have to find out the greatest common factor between these two. So I'm going to put 9 and do the quick prime factorization of 3 and 3. 
And then 21 over here, I'm going to put uh, 3 and 7. So the only uh, prime uh, in their prime factorizations that are common are that is that 3. So that's the only thing that we have. That is our GCF. Our greatest common factor is 3, which means that we are going to divide both of these, both the top and the bottom, by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. And both 3 and 7 are primes, which um, will make it a the simplest form that we can make. So that's how finding the greatest common factor can help you in simplifying a fraction. <clears throat> what I would like you to do now with those couple examples is uh, start on your assignment which is puzzle 2-3. It's a worksheet and um, you simplify a bunch of uh, a bunch of fractions and then put them into a certain pattern that that is the puzzle um, for the worksheet. Um, if you have any questions I'll be taking them tomorrow when I return. Uh, if you would like any of this replayed just uh, ask the uh, substitute and um, I'm sure she'd be more than willing uh, to uh, replay any of the of the sections that you are struggling with. So. I will hopefully see you all tomorrow. Have a great day and keep your stick on the ice.